Yo, what up? And welcome to February Reads. Uh, there is no January Reads because I didn't manage to actually finish anything in January. There were exams and then I was on a trip to Japan. Check out the vlog. And uh, then I got sick, so didn't read anything. And I have to apologize, it's pretty messy right now because I'm in the middle of redecorating and I didn't really have any anywhere to put all those things but whatever so uh, let's just uh, jump right into it and I'll try to keep it as short as possible but as you know that probably uh, won't end up well so uh, the first book I'm going to talk about is the book of uh, Smugglers of Timbuktu by Charlie English and he's a journalist so that means uh, he knows how to write and this book is actually two parts so one part is the history of uh, discovering Timbuktu to Great Britain and France and the other uh, part is uh, when they tried to save the manuscripts from there when the place uh, uh, was conquered by um, Islamist uh, uh, fighters. So uh, the other part takes place uh, in 2012. So it's like one chapter of the history and then one chapter of uh, current day. And uh, it's good. I just feel like it should have been a bit uh, shorter. So it really goes in depth uh, of discovering Timbuktu to Europeans because uh, it's uh, a great civilization of uh, Africa and people always uh, think that it was just Egypt that did something uh, and the other uh, everything else from Africa is just whatever, there was nothing there. But this uh, very well uh, shows very well that there was plenty of things and the manuscripts are this just massive uh, amount of uh, documents, a religious uh, uh, commentary uh, written um, uh, from a long, long time ago. And this is one of the reasons uh, that Timbuktu was uh, uh, so special in people's minds. They're, oh, they thought that there was uh, gold, but actually there was something even better. Knowledge. Uh, it's an interesting book. It gave uh, me uh, some insight and what I really appreciated here was the uh, interviews and descriptions about people who were under the siege there in 2012. And of course the story of uh, these scholars uh, secretly with the money they got from uh, various uh, countries and funds secretly smuggling out all these documents, tens uh, of thousands of documents uh, just uh, under jihadists' nose. So that was really uh, quite cool, but a bit too long, could have been shorter. And the next book uh, is a comic book and this is Lumberjanes Beware the Kitten Holy and it's uh, first part in quite a long series I think and uh, it was interesting, I uh, quite enjoyed it. It's basically uh, girls in a camp and what happens to them, there are some magical things uh, happening and nothing is what it seems. The cost is uh, really fun. There's no deep thought, uh, I feel, put under it, but uh, there's, uh, it's entertaining. So it's silly, it's fun. Uh, the uh, characters act uh, not as people, but as characters of a comic book. But I quite enjoyed it. And the all-female cast is always a plus. I will definitely check out the second part now. Uh, the uh, next one is uh, Tash Hearts Tolstoy and uh, it's by Catherine Ormsby. Ormsby? And uh, I picked it up because uh, uh, it was said that there's asexual representation and uh, there was, but, but that was not part of the uh, 
basic plot. So the whole plot is uh, two teens doing a web series where they have adapted Anna Karenina uh, by uh, Tolstoy to a YouTube web series and what happens when they get uh, suddenly famous and when they get uh, nominated for an award and in between all of that they have their own troubles and worries and um, of course uh, a romance but the romance is done in a way that uh, is romance from this asexual per, uh, girl's point of view and what does the asexual uh, means what is the uh, romantic asexual what are all those different kinds of uh, labels what do they actually mean and how can a, an asexual person be in a relationship what does it mean how do people perceive it things like that so I quite enjoyed it uh, uh, but the uh, surprisingly I really uh, like the web series part of it so, because I have never imagined uh, what uh, goes into uh, doing that kind of series so that was kind of cool it's very current I would say so if you're interested in either of those topics then uh, I suggest you check it out Obelisk Gate by N.K. Jemisin and this is the second part the first part was fifth season and uh, I feel like um, uh, this was better I knew the characters better uh, it was not so confusing and uh, you could see that where the plot was moving towards so uh, like I said on my review for the first one the, uh, I felt like it was setting up, setting up, setting up but uh, nothing really went anywhere here I can see where everything is heading and again the, the uh, two characters uh, are a mother and a daughter so it's very female driven and uh, also the world uh, still is really cool with Orogenes who can move the earth and who need to get the moon back uh, to the earth so uh, all these uh, earthquakes and other crap that's happening will stop and uh, th in this book we uh, learn more about stone eaters who are uh, this uh, weird uh, species living uh, on earth who used to be like 4,000 years ago maybe or tens of thousands of years ago human but now are made of stone and can move through uh, earth and all that cool stuff so uh, it's good uh, if you're looking uh, to uh, read something uh, new uh, that's kind of like um, uh, fantasy sci-fi uh, mix I don't know how to describe it but if you're looking to uh, read something new that's a trilogy then I definitely suggest you uh, check it out and I'm definitely buying the third and the last one because I want to know what will happen the last books uh, uh, one of the more serious or well uh, not fiction uh, things that I read was leftover women the Resurgence of Gender Inequality in China by Leta Hong Fincher and it basically uh, tackles the problem uh, that um, uh, middle class women who have university education in China after they marry or before marrying they buy property with their uh, spouse or future spouse and usually the property uh, is registered under a man's name even though the uh, woman and their uh, family will contribute uh, contribute uh, uh, either um, uh, the same amount of money or slightly less uh, or they will uh, help with furnishing the apartment so it's uh, quite a feminist book and it uh, shows that even though uh, women in China are more uh, liberated uh, than uh, they used to be although uh, during Song dynasty they were even more liberated and owned even more property but that's a topic for another book uh, but uh, where was I anyway uh, so um, this uh, explores this uh, uh, wealth moving uh, towards uh, men in uh, current Chinese uh, economy 
and uh, why it's called leftover women it's uh, because uh, it is expected that a woman should marry by the age of 25 it's been uh, up a couple of years uh, from what it used to be previously but it's expected that women would marry and it is uh, bombarded in media that a uh, woman will uh, women will marry only a man who has property so there is a pressure to buy property but also the property that is bought then goes to the man's name and women uh, who at the beginning would uh, tell that they want uh, a, an apartment in their own name they want uh, or at least with the husbands and theirs uh, their name uh, they will uh, succumb to the pressure of the society and their uh, parents uh, when uh, they are 27 or 28 or 30 because at that time they are already leftover women so they will marry men uh, who are uh, probably not right for them just because uh, they w don't want to be leftover and also then uh, they will enter into a relationship where they are probably not in love with a man and also they will be trapped uh, where all of their money has gone towards uh, an apartment that is owned by the man. So uh, from uh, middle class university educated women with good jobs they will be stuck uh, in a relationship uh, that, that makes it very hard for them uh, to negotiate things or to leave if the husband is violent. So it goes really in depth with uh, all of those uh, topics. I really enjoyed it and I have a couple of other books uh, uh, in the same uh, topic I feel uh, and I definitely want to read them and this is something I really want to uh, know more about. Okay. Uh, the uh, next to last, is it next to last? Uh, book is a picture book! It's all, uh, all right, darling! <laughs> uh, the Contemporary Drag Scene by Greg Bailey and it's basically a uh, photography book. There are some uh, texts forward by Alaska and uh, then pictures that uh, Greg has taken and I got it really cheap from uh, Urban Outfitters uh, in London uh, for like three pounds or something so that was nice and it's cool to look at the pictures I mean there are a lot of uh, fun things here and uh, is there anybody I especially like? No? Oh, 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 I saw Katya Yay, Katya! <laughs> so this is very uh, nice to leave through, so I read that as well. And now for the last book. And the last book I read in February, uh, or that I finished in February, I started it uh, quite a long time ago, is uh, The Ladies' Guide to Petticoats and Piracy. It's by Mackenzie Lee, and uh, I picked it up also. Uh, like uh, Tash Loves Tolstoy because it had asexual representation and uh, when Tash Loves Tolstoy uh, was uh, about a hetero, hetero relationship I, 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 can I say heterosexual relationship when it's not sexual but uh, this is more about uh, I would say a lesbian relationship although it's not again it's there's not anything sexual in it and uh, the uh, it's a second book uh, by the series the first one was uh, what was the first one you know if you see this uh, cover you know what was the first one but the first one uh, concentrated on uh, this uh, oh, Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue was the first one and now here Felicity who is uh, the uh, sister of uh, the main protagonist of the first book uh, has her own adventure and has to be a doctor but in the 19th century it's uh, impossible and uh, this uh, then uh, turns into from trying to be a doctor to a, uh, this uh, 
amazing adventure to uh, North Africa where they try to uh, find dragons, uh, sea dragons uh, with her friend and her potential uh, love interest and uh, then what happens after that and uh, it's basically one long struggle of trying to make it in a man's world so uh, it's also a discovery of uh, uh, herself because she defines herself by I'm different I have these uh, intelligent interests and she actually thinks she's better than people who are interested in parties or entertaining or whatnot she can't uh, understand that you can be interested in several things and still be an intellectual so this really resonates with me because um, uh, sometimes uh, I tend to forget uh, about people having different interests and I judge them by solely one but then again people uh, judge me uh, for my interest in wig and wigs and makeup as well but I'm more than that I would like to think uh, and also she's so driven to make it in her profession it's very, uh, very inspiring and the best part of this all is that the, the author at the end uh, of the story uh, gives you uh, all the hist uh, historical details, how she came up with everything, how historically accurate everything is and what did she tweak and just a lot of information uh, about uh, the hi historical part of it and I really appreciated it. I didn't think that was coming so I was kind of like, is it kind of like historical fiction or is it not? But I guess it could be. Uh, I liked it. <laughs> I liked it a lot. Uh, uh, it was very entertaining and it kept changing uh, up uh, the pace. So when you thought something was going to happen, another thing did. And I also like the uh, Muslim representation in here because uh, the world is not Eurocentric and I really like that this was tackled here as well. So wow, those were all the books I read or looked at pictures uh, at, and I'm quite satisfied with what I did in November but I'm kind of sad that in January I didn't manage to finish any anything and now the March is not going so well either but maybe this is how this year is going to be I'll just take it as it goes anyway I hope uh, this uh, video turns out well uh, leave a like if you liked and uh, subscribe if you haven't already and i'll hopefully see you in mar Fe april with my march reads bye